Education International um, is the voice of the teaching profession worldwide. We strongly believe that uh, governments need to take uh, the measures that are required to improve quality education in their, in their countries. We do that on the one hand by influencing the agencies in the international community, by um, encouraging donor organizations to give priority to education, and on the other hand, by giving our member organizations, these are education unions and professional associations around the world, the tools to, um, one, put political pressure on, on their national governments to do what's right, and two, by also training the members of these organizations in becoming better teachers. Okay. When we talk about education for all, we are, in fact, talking about how to combat child labor. For me, it's the same thing. Um, we must get children out of the factories, out of the fields, getting them into the schools. So I've been involved in a lot of child labor programs and activities in Ghana. Now, in Ghana we distinguish between child labor and child work. Child work is any work that the child does whilst going to school, either supporting the parents to sell or to do something which does not deprive him or her the opportunity for going to school and developing his or her capacity. That is child work. But child labor is the situation where the child is denied the opportunity for self-development, going to school, develop his or her capacity for him or her to become whatever God has destined him or her to become in future. So the child's life is, or becomes very miserable because he or she is not able to get the opportunity to go to school, to acquire skills, to acquire trade, so he can fend for himself or herself in future. So that is what referred to as child labor, and it's a big problem in our part of the world, also because of the economic hardship that many parents are going through. Some parents push their children to go and sell and to go and work because they have to bring income to their family so that they could be able to get something to eat, and we think this is very, very bad. It's not going to give future for our continent, it's not going to give future to our countries. So it's something that we're working very hard to ensure that children who are involved in various aspects of child labor, they are taking off those programs, put into education and develop. So I know in many parts of Africa where there are a lot of the trade unions working with NGOs who have uh, taken children from quarries, fishing communities, and have put them into education. And these children are going to uh, school and developing their capacity and their selves. And sometimes I'm puzzled about why we still need to convince people, governments, politicians, that this is their holy task. I cannot understand that governments in Africa would allow, for example, an extension of summer holidays for only one reason, and it is to get children into the fields to help harvest. Uh, I, I think that, that teachers also have an important role to play here because they are um, everywhere in the most remote areas. So they can see where communities fail to bring all children into, into the school. Obviously, it, it, is, it is also a matter of Poverty, it's difficult for, for parents um, who depend on the income generated by their children to send them to school and to miss that income. So I think that the most effective anti-child labor programs um, include uh, programs that help their parents uh, to, um, to cope with the fact that there will be no income generated by, by their children, not just to cope with that fact, but also to have compensation uh, uh, for that. There are many, many, many programs. Um, and Education International is, for example, represented 
on the board of the Global March Against Child Labour. It is extremely important for us to focus on the girl child and girls' uh, access to quality education. We know that of the children that don't have access today, there are a majority of girls, unfortunately. So we have to try to develop strategies of how can we reach these girls that for some reason are denied education. It can be hard to reach girls. We know girls in rural areas uh, sometimes don't get to go to school. There can be many reasons. Well, in, in our campaign um, to try to get the Millennium Development Goal, Education for All, accomplished before the end of this year. That is about those 58 million children that I uh, mentioned um, earlier. We give spe spe specific attention to the children that you are referring to. In fact, the group of 58 million is mainly, mainly consists of girls and of physically challenged children. And um, it is this group that gets special attention in the, um, in the campaigns to, um, to realize this, this goal. You know that the United Nations um, has a special um, program, um, the United Nations Envoy for Global Education uh, is 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 looking at this, and I know that he, in particular, is is quite engaged in in getting a focus on on the group of children that you are referring to, because you're absolutely right. They are the group that was forgotten when we tried to 10, 15 years ago develop the programs to get the big masses of children into school. And to some extent you could say that we have been successful. 58 million is a big number of children still to be uh, sent to school. But 10, 15 years ago that number was much bigger. So there has been some progress. But in those years we have focused on the mainstream and we have not paid the attention that should have been paid to the children that are blind, that are deaf, the physically and mentally challenged uh, children. And I would say one or two years ago, um, the focus has, has, has changed a bit. Um, and it is this group that, that will get more attention than it has had in the past.